after the preliminaries, give you 10 minutes to tell us your story, the story of your life. After that, we will engage with you. Three minutes before you leave the room, we'll also give you an opportunity to tell us your last testament, so to speak. The committee is chaired by the Speaker of the National Assembly. You are truly here. I'll uh, give an opportunity to all members to introduce themselves, then the clerk's office, then we move to the next, starting with the deputy speaker. Um, my name is Gladys Boss, member for Wasingishu County and deputy speaker at the National Assembly, Karibu. Kimani Shongwa, MP Kikwe. Opio Wandai, MP Ugunja. Junet Mohammed, MP Sunais. Owen Bayer, MP Kilifi North. Robert Mbui, MP Kadiani. Rehab Mukami, County MP Nyeri. And I want to declare that Florence is my good, good friend. Thank you. Ferdinand Wanyonyi, MP Kwanza, Tranzoya County. <coughs> George Gitonga Murugara, MP Tharaka, Tharaka Nifi County. And David Kosing, my name. Of course, I the MP. Abdul Rahim Daud, MP for North Dimenti, Meru County. Naito Mishimiwa Mishimboko, Mjumbe Walikoni, Mishimiwa Florence Bora, Kwa Mwenzangu, Katika Timu, Yawana Ukimbia, Msimone, Ivo, and Akimbia, 200 meters and 100 meters. Good afternoon, Kaleba Missy, MP Sabot. Emma Semeri, Teso South. Naisula Lesuda, MP Samburu West. And I must also declare that I've worked closely with Honorable Florence in a parliamentary committee, and she's also my friend. But you can be sure today that will not hinder uh, my, me exercising my duty. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. My name is Sarah Kyoko. I am the acting clerk of the National Assembly, and I have with me the director, audit, appropriations, and other select committees, Ms. Florence Abonyo, and also the deputy director, legal services, Mr. Michael Karuru, and quite a number of other staff of parliament, the National Assembly specifically, who are assisting this committee. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, Florence. Uh I'll ask you about a few documents. Do you have your KRA clearance certificate? Speak to the mic. Yes, Chair. Uh, do you have your Higher Education Loans Board clearance? Yes, Chair. Ethics and Corruption Commission clearance? Yes, Chair. Certificate of Good Conduct? Yes, Chair. Have you ever been charged in a court of law and convicted of an offense? No, Chair. Are you a dual citizen of Kenya and any other sovereign? I'm a Kenyan citizen. You have your national ID card? Yes, Chair. You will furnish the original with the clerk's team, and they'll give it back to you later. Okay. Uh, what is your financial net worth? My financial net, net worth is about 200 million Kenya shillings. Uh, what is that made of? Uh, my home in Kericho, with a tea farm, that is about 60 million. My home in Nairobi, that is about 25 million. Some pieces of land in Kericho and uh, in Kajado. Uh, some vehicles that add up to about approximately, um, all of them about 175 million have approximated to about 200 million. I also have shares in three circles, one of them Pakoso, in Marisha, and Kenya Highlands circle. Is that family wealth or personal wealth? Some of them are family wealth, like the Kericho home. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll give you 10 minutes to tell us the story of your life. I'm sure you've been watching the proceedings. Yes. 
tell us who is Florence Bore and how has your journey been to up to where you are sitting? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Let me take this opportunity to sincerely thank you for according me this opportunity to come before this committee. Secondly, I want to thank His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoe Ruto, for finding it fit to give me this position as a nominee uh, in the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection. I want to promise that if approved by this committee, I will work hard and serve all Kenyans diligently. Um, my early background, before I go there, I want to say I'm a wife, I'm a mother of three, and uh, I'm a firstborn in a family of six. My mother is a retired teacher, and my late father was an accountant and an auditor with the tea industry, having worked before in the civil service. And um, I started my education at a school in my home village called Kapsuser Primary School from 1977 up to 1979, class one to class three. Then my father moved me to St. Patrick's Primary School, still in Kericho County, and I started my education there. I continued my education there from class four to class seven, and I did my CP. Then I moved on to Kepsigis Girls for my own levels, that is from one to form four in 1987. After that, I went back to the same school in 1988-89 for my Form 5 and Form 6. Thereafter, I went to for attachment at Unilever T at the medical center, at the medical hospital, where I worked for about a year before I joined Kagumo Teachers Training College in Nyeri for my degree in education. Thereafter, I went for my teaching practice at Nakuru High School. And then I was posted to Kericho Day Kagumo Secondary School. Kagumo covering degrees? I said a diploma in oh. education. Okay. So after my diploma in education in Kagumo, I was posted to Nakuru High and then posted to Kericho Day Secondary School, where I taught for about 20 years. Um, while at Kericho Day, I was able to do my degree uh, at Moy University because they started a campus just across the school at Kericho Teachers College. So within that campus, I was able to do my degree in education. Then I moved to another school, two more schools, Kericho T Boys and Toror Girls as a deputy principal in 2011. 2012, I resigned from teaching I vied for the women rep seat, Kericho. I wasn't successful. Then uh, I was employed at the county government of Bomet as a director of education in charge of vocational training. I was there in 2014 to 2015. 2015, I was appointed by the then government as a board member at GDC. Geothermal Development Company, uh, the parastatal is the Ministry of Energy. I was a board member in charge of uh, human resource and also the audit committee. That is where I was able to work with other board members to streamline GDC. We were able to have a new management. They had issues. But we were able to streamline to have a new CEO and new managers that helped the operations of the company. We were able to open new operations at Baringo Silali. And the company did well. And I believe it is still doing uh, very well since then. 
from GDC in 2017, I resigned as a board member. I think I still had one more year to go. So I vied again for the woman rep seat in Kericho, and this time round I got it, and I came to parliament, where I've been serving until 20, uh, the year 2022. In parliament, I was able to serve together with some of my colleagues here in the Committee of Members' Welfare and Facilities, the Committee of Sports, Tourism and Culture, and Budget and Appropriation Committee. And I want to thank teachers that have shaped my life in my high school. Some of my high school teachers were the late Dr. Joyce Laboso. Uh, I also have uh, teachers like um, Wen, those were my teachers during my time, and the other teachers that were with us at that time. And I want to thank them for shaping me. Um, I want to promise that I will work hard and truly serve this nation. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now open up uh, to the plenary for members to ask you and engage you in uh, the manner that I said, starting with the David Speaker. Good afternoon, Mwishimwa Bore. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to give you uh, my heartiest congratulations on being nominated as cabinet, for the position of Cabinet Secretary, Labor and Social Protection. As a women's rights activist, I am immensely proud that you're here today. And I know that some people said I shouldn't say that, but I have no apologies, Honorable Chair. Yes. Um, uh, so I want to ask you, uh, one of the key pillars of the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto is establishment of the universal social security system uh, and revamping NSSF. So which specific social protection interventions will you embrace to achieve this pillar? Thank you. We'll take four, then you respond. Kimani Chungwa. Thank you, Chair. Chair Florence uh, worked with me in the Budget and Appropriations Committee before we were evicted and ended up again together in the Members' Welfare Committee. So <laughs> I, I, I know her capacity. Uh, but Florence, you've been nominated into a very critical ministry. Ministry of Labor and Social Protection. Mm -hmm. And you've had the pronouncement by His Excellency President on uh, increasing, or, or rather changing our culture of savings and increasing the contributions to uh, NSSF by everybody in the country, both employed and those who are not in formal employment. Mm -hmm. I would want to hear what your plan would be to ensure that we achieve this, uh, and more so even from those who are not employed. What, what uh, strategies will you deploy to make sure that you encourage even those who are not in formal employment to get into savings? Mm -hmm. Two, uh, you, you have uh, seen stories of uh, our young people who have been treated uh, to very inhumane uh, uh, treatment in some countries, more so in the Middle East, a few countries in the Middle East. Uh, you remember the case of the young lady from Bomet County, your neighboring county, and many others uh, from uh, Kilifi and all over. I want to hear what interventions, again, if you are approved as minister, you would have to ensure that our young people are not treated uh, to inhumane uh, conditions wherever they go to work around the world, and more so what interventions you would be proposing in your ministry to ensure that if any Kenyan is suffering out there, they have a way of getting back to the country uh, with, without delay. Lastly, the working force in the West, uh, basically in Western Europe, uh, even in the Americas, they have an aging work group, uh, working class. Uh, and here, back at home, we have a very big uh, population of young, and very productive people who are very well trained and educated. I want to hear what you intend to do as minister to ensure that you tap into that uh, market in the West, uh, even in other far east uh, countries like uh, South Korea, 
They also have that issue, problem of having a, an aging working group. Yet we have that labor here that we can be able to export there. Uh, I would want to hear just what your strategies would be to make sure that we get into those uh, other areas other than Kenyans just looking into the Middle East where they uh, get mistreated mm. and they could get job opportunities uh, in the Far East and uh, in the Western countries. Uh, uh, honorable, Wonder. honorable Bore, uh, you must have noticed some uh, kind of unrest or turmoil in the last few days or so within Kericho T estates. Okay? A case in point is the touching of some tea plucking machines at the Tagabi estate owned by some multinational company in Belgut uh, two weeks ago. We also saw some demonstration or running battles with the, between the youth and police uh, in Konoin constituency, I think two days ago. Oh, the issue here is uh, about uh, the employment of tea plucking machines, and the Kericho governor um, has been unrepentant on this matter. He has been uh, very, very, very uh, loud and insisting that tea companies must cede their ground to the demands or quit operations in the region altogether. Now, as, C as CS nominee, uh, what is your view on mechanized tea, uh, tea plucking in uh, these estates? Okay. Uh, and uh, considering that these multinational companies are a source of gainful employment, really, not only in Kericho, but in Bomet and other counties, okay? Uh, who employ locals. Oh, do you support the view of the governor uh, that these companies must see the ground, must see to the demands of these locals, or pack and go home? Uh, secondly, is, uh, I, I took some time to look at the Kenya Kwanza manifesto with regard to your docket. Uh, at uh, page 55, there is a pronouncement that Kenya Kwanza commits to a fit for purpose universal social security system encompassing pension, occupational hazard, and unemployment insurance. End of quote. So, what could you kindly help uh, jobless Kenyans understand what exactly? Uh, uh, is meant by unemployment insurance in that manifesto. Is it a monthly stipend given to jobless youths until they find some job? Because many Kenyans who are jobless uh, would love to know uh, how to benefit from this unemployment insurance. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I'm on the... the, the uh, Honorable friend is my friend also, but uh, that's another story. Now, <laughs> Madam Nominee. She's just also. Uh, also yeah. <laughs> you know, Chairman, during the political times, when I make a lot of noise, she's one of the people who stop me in Parliament and tell me, end up the police. <laughs> uh, but now, that's another story. Now, uh, Madam Nominee, uh, the biggest problem we are facing in uh, employment of our population is the youth. Those are the people who are really suffering in this country. And they form a big bulk of our population. And you know when they are looking for jobs, they will be told to bring, they say the qualification for the job, let's say, is five years experience. There's no university that gives you a degree of experience. You have just finished university now. You are, uh, you, maybe you married at the university, you have a kid, you are jobless, you are tamaking here, and all the qualifications he has in terms of educational qualification and other qualifications, but the only one doesn't have his experience, for example, that is why majority of them are jobless. And uh, they are suffering. What do you think you can do as the minister in charge of employment, if you are approved by this house, to mainstream the youth so that in any employment that is done in this country, 60 to 70% goes to the youth and 30% to the elderly. 
My second question is uh, the issue of, uh, if you look at the manifesto of Kenya Kwanzaa, they say that in five years, they will finish malnutrition in this country completely. Everyone will be fed, stomachs will be full, everyone will be healthy, everyone is going to be happy, there will be reproduction of people in this country. How do you intend to achieve that in five years? What plans will you put in place to make sure that no Kenyan sleeps hungry within five years? Robert Mbui will take five, uh, Florence. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Um, I would like to ask the nominee that uh, we've all had okay. the proposal to increase savings. Um, and uh, the first thing that uh, comes to mind is that uh, in this country, the Mamambogas, the Boda Bodas, and those uh, peasant farmers are struggling to even put food on the table and to educate their children. How do you reconcile those two? Increasing savings when people cannot even afford the basic, uh, basic needs. And uh, then, how will you assure workers that if these savings are increased, that their money will be safe? Because I think the vehicle we are intending to use is NSSF, which in the past uh, has been riddled with very serious cases of uh, misuse of, uh, of, 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 of workers' money. In fact, I will tell you that uh, there is a lot of corruption cases that occurred during the days of YK92, where they turned NSSF into a cash cow. What will you do to ensure this doesn't happen again? When? Thank you. Uh, uh, Speaker Chair, I, I just want to just have one question. Uh, and I note also that uh, you are a teacher like I was before. And, uh, yes, so represent the teacher as well. But I want to say over the years, we have witnessed large uh, strikes in public sector that have affected the economy adversely. The doctors strike, the nurses, teachers. Today, Kenya Airways is a national strategic asset. We have also witnessed industrial unrest occasioned by pilots, uh, the pilot union at the airline. As we sit here today, the pilot union has issued a strike notice to the management. How do you intend to put to an end, once and for all, all the industrial problems posed by the constant pilot strikes that contribute significantly to crippling the already cash-strapped airline? This question is courtesy of the pilots themselves. They'll be watching you as you answer this. Thank you. Answer those six. They have been very short. I expect your answers to be equally short. Thank you, Chair. Um, let me start with the question that has been asked by the deputy speaker uh, on the key pillars on universal social security and how to revamp social, uh, social security. Let me start by saying this is a flagship project for this government and the president has been very passionate about saving uh, for the future. I know NSSF has been the fund that has been taking care of this. Uh, and maybe challenges have been there before. And what we want to speak to are the contributions that are made to NSSF. The 200 shillings that is paid by the worker and the employer is not enough to be able to save for the future. We have seen the challenges that beneficiaries have at the end or at retirement. They are not able to get uh, those benefits because maybe the fund is not enough, it has not been invested uh, in income generating projects. The, the, I think the savings have been earning very low interests, so the returns are not enough to be able uh, to make meaningful benefits to the uh, beneficiaries. However, I think we should look at what other countries are doing. When I looked at Uganda, looked at Tanzania, we are proposing in Kenya to raise the contributions to about 6% of, of the pay of the workers. Across in Uganda, it is about 15%, 16%. So we are not even yet there. But we want to tell our people to save for the future. 
when we save more, we are guarding uh, that future by having more uh, contributions. The other thing that I know is that the contributions that we make is not pegged on the salaries that Kenyans have or the workers in Kenya uh, get. For example, the person who gets um, a salary of one million still pays the 200 shillings. Really, uh, we need to increase depending on the amount that a person is earning to be able to have better contributions and have a better uh, uh, contributions to NSSF. The other thing on universal social security is that we need Kenya to be able to be at the standard of ILO, where we have social security standards, the international standards are very high, and Kenya has not been, Kenya has not ratified that uh, ILO standard, and we are yet to go to reach there. It will take maybe another four years for us to be able to reach that international standard. That question I'll still answer on the question that has been asked on the same later on that was asked by Honorable um, Bui. Now the informal sector on NSSF savings that has been asked by Honorable Ichungwa, how we bring in the informal sector to be able to pay uh, into this uh, NSSF. What I know is that currently we are getting contributions from the employed workers. We are not getting contributions from the informal sector, the mamamboga, the boda boda sector. We need to find a way how we can generate or how we can attract payments from the informal sector. Either we partner with Safaricom so that when you load airtime, part of it goes to NSSF and, you know, be able to know how we can bring on board and ensure that these investments are productive so that we are encouraged to save onto NSSF. Because right now we have circles. We go to circles because we, got, we get dividends. So I think NSSF should also be able to attract uh, these people on board and be able to benefit in uh, to benefit the informal sector. Um, Honorable Ichungo has also asked about the humane oppressions of the migrant workers. I want to empathize with the migrant workers that have gone to the Middle East and have been oppressed. They have been mistreated because of their stay there. And I want to say no parent, no guardian sends a child across to the Gulf to expect them to come in a coffin or to expect them to be mistreated. They go there because of unemployment. They go there to look for jobs, to be able to improve their households back here. And I want to promise that I'll get to the bottom of this issue. And this issue has led to many deaths. When you talk about 62 deaths just this year, even that one life that we have lost as Kenya, we should find out what is happening. Uh, and I want to promise that I will look into it. My first action will be to look at, if I'm approved by this committee, is to be able to discuss with my counterpart in Saudi Arabia to be able to see what we can do to improve the conditions of these migrant workers. I'm happy to report that Parliament was able to approve 60 million to be able to create a safe home um, where we can put our migrant workers, the Kenyan workers who are in distress. Once we have them there, once we have the houses, maybe we can have those who are in desperate situations to hold them there as we prepare them to come back to Kenya or even put them in other employment. The other challenge that we have as a Ministry of Labor is that the labor attaches that are in Gulf region are very few. For example, in Saudi Arabia, we only have one staff, one labor attaché. 
that handles over 210,000 Kenyans who are spread across um, Saudi Arabia. So part of that money that has been approved will be employing about 10 labor attaches that will be able to spread them across Saudi Arabia in various uh, cities so that they are able to handle them and be able to listen to them. Uh, my also thoughts are the workers that we have in Saudi Arabia are about 210,000. Within those cities, they should be able to be knowing who they are, who are there, be able to help each other, have some form of um, relaying of information from each other so that we have sort of kind of people who man them among themselves and be able to report to the labor attaches uh, to be able to sort their problems in time. Uh, the other issue that I would be trying to look at is to be able to ensure that they have a welfare fund so that all the time they have issues, they can be helped. And I think they should also have some cover for medical because it looks like when they are in problems, they are in health issues, they have health issues, they are not treated well and they suffer. And by the time they are back here, they will have undergone so many uh, challenges. Uh, another approach to this problem is a ministerial uh, block that has been formed by the East African countries so that we don't approach this issue as a country alone. The, I know my predecessor had been able to do a meeting with the other 11 countries in East Africa, our neighbors, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Ethiopia, the 11 countries. I'll be following up on that to see how far they are. I hear the minister in charge currently is Minister of Labor from Ethiopia, and I'll be following up to see how much they've done. Um, speaking on the same, I would want to say it is also good for us to open up markets, more markets than Saudi Arabia, be able to uh, do bilateral labor agreements with other countries, which don't have to rely on Saudi Arabia alone. The other thing that needs to be done is to streamline NEA, National Employment Authority, that does the registration of these agencies. I'm told the agencies is about 500. There could be gaps in within those agencies. And it is a multi-sectoral multi committee that does the vetting of these um, agencies. The Ministry of Interior is involved. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is involved. We have the DCI. We have almost 10 government organizations. That committee needs to be looked into, streamlined, be able to see what these agencies are doing and uh, ensure that they are doing the right thing. The other proposal is to ensure that there is pre-departure training for these migrant workers. Some of them, they go to Saudi Arabia without the basic skills. They don't have the language, so once they reach there, they are not able to speak in English. So they are not able to communicate with the Saudis. Number two, if they don't go through this training, when, once they reach there, um, they may not be able to do the household activities that they are supposed to do. And also even to be given the basics about the culture of um, the culture of the Saudis. So my thoughts are we have a mandatory pre-departure training and ensure that no Kenyan domestic worker goes out without that training to go and work in that country. Point of intervention, Honorable Chair. The issue here being discussed is that many of many Kenyans who go to Saudi Arabia yes. come back dead. Yes. Nobody's complaining about whether they have the ability to do the job, whether they need training. The yes. issue is why are they ending up dead? Mm -hmm. And has the Saudi Arabian, the Saudi Arabian, and I've never had anyone saying that they're going to hold the Saudi Arabian government to account. Because we have Saudi Arabians in Kenya, but they don't end up dead. 
mm. but our children are ending up dead. So that is the issue. It doesn't matter how many committees or how many officers we send to Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. because they are not police officers. It is the, the police officers and the security forces in Saudi Arabia that are not protecting the migrant workers. So even if you send 100 embassy officials and attaches, how will that protect them? Thank you, Thank you Deputy Speaker. Um, I think it is also the system that is in Saudi Arabia. Once these migrant workers are in Saudi, they are under the masses of the employer. They are not even supposed to move out of that household. They are not, that's why I was saying, that pre-departure training will also try and help to show these Kenyans the kind of uh, culture they have. They are within that household, that employer that has control over that person, that worker, so they do not get out of those homesteads. So even this, the, I agree, there is a problem and we need to address it. And I believe with the political goodwill, we are going to do much and stop this menace once and for all. Thank you. Oh, the question. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. A question on the airport. <laughs> uh, the airline. The I, thought, I thought she was noting them down. My question. I did. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the direction from the speaker. My question on the pilot. No, I'm not finished. Yes. No, that is a very serious okay. case. Thank you. The David Speaker's question was just an in the. I've finished and I've done one of the boy chungwas. All those uh, five honorable members. The third one by Honorable Ichungo was on the aging workforce in the international destinations. And he was asking, how can we help our youth be able to go and work there? I'm sure we can collaborate and see how we can create jobs for the youth. And in terms of even, uh, they don't even have to go there. They, we can do the, they can do some of the jobs through the internet and help them. Um, Honorable Wandai asked about the unrest in Kericho, plucking machines that happened about two weeks ago, and even the one that happened about two days ago, the view on mechanized uh, tier states. Um, as a cabinet secretary, Ministry of Lab Labor and Social Protection, on labor issues, I want to say I'm ready to provide an environment for the businesses to be able to thrive in this country. Number two, I will also provide an environment for the stakeholders to sit down and discuss. I'm aware the last agreement between um, FKE and the employees was that, uh, and government was that 40% mechanization was being allowed and 60% uh, employment for Kenyans, including the locals. So I want to believe where I am, the government's position is for the status quo to remain and to really have the stakeholders on the table so that we can discuss and have dialogue. This is our country. We want jobs for our people and we also, as a ministry, uh, encourage uh, mechanization to be done, but to a certain level at the same time employ our people. And I'll tell you, I come from that region, and you see tea farms that are very big, and maybe on my thoughts is that these multinational companies should also improve on CSR. What they are doing is not enough. They can do more than that. And then the land rates that are there, there are things that you can discuss on the table and agree and move on. Thank you. Um, you also asked about the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto on, um, I think it was about social security and unemployment. We cannot run away from unemployment in this country, and I want to believe that uh, the Hustler Fund will be able to address this issue of unemployment, be able to provide 
uh, money for the youths that are unemployed to be able to do their businesses and encourage them, them that as even they do the businesses, they save for their retirement, they save for their future, and will be able to protect their uh, investments in NSSF. So is the Hustler Fund the equivalent of unemployment insurance envisaged in the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto? I'll relook look at it. I don't want to say I know everything, but I'll be able to sit down and relate that issue. And you're welcome to my office. We can discuss again. Hustler Fund is for all Kenyans. It is not just for Kenya Kwanza. Thank you. Honorable Jeanette, my friend in parliament, uh, we were on different sides, but we related well. And I want to say thank you. Your, your question was on unemployment, the employment of population. We have youth that are very many that do not have experience and every time they want to do they want to get employment they are asked for their experience uh, i know through nita we can be able to take up youths that have finished various courses and attach them in various industries so industrial attachment is one of our responsibilities as a ministry and i know we'll be working with nita to be able to ensure that our youth are taken up to be able to get that experience. There is a lot that is being done by NITA. I will tell you, we are not just looking at the white collar jobs, we are also looking at even those artisans who have experience without going through any training, yet they have the skill. We have what has been started that is called recognition of prior learning. You recognize uh, a skill that someone has certified by NITA, and they can also be given uh, the mandate to be able to train others, and NITA helps them in, uh, in certifying them. Um, I would also be reaching out to the other ministries that will work together to ensure that we take up most of our youths into employment, into attachments, into internships, so that we are able to give them experience and be ready for the job market. You also asked a question on um, Kenya Kwanza Manifesto, where we'll have to finish malnutrition in five years. I want to say malnutrition affects children under five years. And uh, I'll be working with most of the county governments that provide ECD education to ensure that these children are protected. We also have NGOs that have come on board that help us as a ministry to be able to provide uh, food, to be able to provide stipends for those vulnerable, uh, uh, the vulnerable population like these children. Currently, there is an ongoing program in the ministry that is funded by World Bank and UNICEF, where the pilot program is being done in uh, five counties of Marsabit, it is also being done in Kitui and other, another five counties. So the issue here to be able to spread across the country, we ensure we involve uh, these county governments to ensure that our children do not die of malnutrition. We also ensure that they are vaccinated because they are under five years and they should be uh, vaccinated against uh, diseases. The other approach is to ensure that we have education on the masses to prevent malnutrition by ensuring that we provide foods that are right. And if they don't have the foods, we also encourage them to provide, you know, the basics of a healthy diet. We also ensure that the mothers are able to breastfeed their babies, if possible, for the first six months. But I know the question could be, if that parent, if that mother cannot even be able to get food to eat, would she be able to produce milk to be able to breastfeed that baby? Uh, in other third world country, uh, sorry, in other uh, developed countries, they have uh, an equivalent of a blood bank, of breast milk bank, where those who have excess milk can be able to donate. Maybe we'll look at that uh, in the near future. But I want to answer Honorable Junet by telling him that we will sort out that issue of malnutrition 
It is also my area. I'm passionate about it. I'll go across and see how best we can be able to address the issue. Then you have the increase of savings for mama mboga and basic needs, well, yet they cannot get the basic needs. I said we will support the mama mboga, the boda boda, using the hustler fund, and as they do those businesses, we encourage them to save with uh, NSSF for their future. Savings, how do we save with NSSF? How do we take care of our investments at NSSF? I look forward to streamline the NSSF. We ensure we have a board that is able to take care of the fund and be able to make uh, investments. And we'll be able to do that by ensuring that um, we have quarterly reports about the investments that are put in the media for, to ensure that we have transparency. We will also ensure that we have the Auditor General to be able to audit uh, the investments at NSSF. And then generally encourage uh, the culture of saving by Kenyans. Chair, I think I've finished. There was a question by Honorable Mbui. I think on the large strikes, or is it? Owen. It is Owen, sorry. On the strikes at uh, Kenya IOS, I also want to promise that I'll sit down with them and uh, be able to uh, look at the issues that are there in and be able to bring a solution to Kenya Airways. Florence, I want us to upscale our speed. Eh? Yes. Yeah. You have uh, taken about 40 minutes to talk about s some short, short questions from these colleagues. We'll take another round. Yes. This time, uh, like I said, you have to be precise and concise. And when you ask questions, also be precise and concise. Mary. Ferdinand, Daoud, Mishi. I'll, let's take those first. George, did you also want to join the fray? So Mary, Ferdinand, George, Daoud, Mishi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. One question each. Uh, speaker, we had an agreement. On this side, it's just the three of us have three questions, kindly. I have already, very given, short. I have already given five. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, we were told earlier that uh, NSSF has increased its contributions and returns on investment to $280 billion. And at the moment, there is a, an informal sector product called Haba Haba where you contribute 25 shillings per day, and if you do that continuously for five years, you're able to get half of that money to refinance your business. How do you intend to improve on that? Secondly, with the inflation, <laughs> the cost of living has gone very high. And the, win the, the, the minimum wage bill can hardly, the, the, the minimum uh, daily wage, sorry, can hardly, you know, sustain the ordinary worker. Uh, uh, having in mind the prevailing uh, economic uh, situation, how do you intend to deal with that issue of the minimum <coughs> wage? And as I conclude, this no, is Mary. very dear to me. Mr. Speaker, with <laughs> your permission, on the issue of social protection, famously known as Pese Awaze, widows, and persons with disability. There are challenges in that sector. In the last, I think, three to five years, there is hardly any new entrants or beneficiaries. There's no registration of new beneficiaries into the fund. Identification of these beneficiaries, inadequate funding, duplication of social interventions. Some counties are also coming up with their own initiatives 
I know of Kakamega that has got a program for mothers and babies. Kwale has another one on NHIF, I think, and many others. How are you planning to deal with the issue of duplication and then the distribution of that, those social funds? And then there's also segregation. In some wards, you find it is the widows benefiting. You go to some wards, it is the persons with disability. So Kenyans are asking, where is equity there in, 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 in these funds, in the distribution of those funds? Uh, what do you have to say about that? Thank you. Uh, Flo, uh, ex-colleague, I think uh, Ichungo asked this question, and um, it, based because I've been affected, this Middle East uh, issue, uh, it should go beyond what you have said. Because the issue here is the agents, the Kenyan agents here locally, and agents in the Middle East, because I have actually a case, of a case in the Middle East. The question is, the agents here and the agents in the Middle East are all bogus. Because the moment they have that connection, say five children or five girls or four or ten, whatever they are going to the Middle East, the moment they get to the Middle East, they, 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 this girl's uh, uh, telephone uh, sets and uh, passports are taken by employees. By the, by the employer, sorry. And Florence, go down. Because it's a very urgent key thing. People are suffering. Then when they get there, and the passport has been taken, the telephone has been taken. So what happens is that this particular child, I call him the anomaly children, there's no connection between the embassy, our embassy in the Middle East, and the number of children that have been sent to that particular agent. Once they get the money, they, they close shop. That's why we have cases where somebody die, a child dies in the Middle East, and there's no connection at all. You don't even know about it. We have a case, you remember, recently where somebody died and has been in the mortuary for almost eight months because there was no information. So you, I think you do more than, uh, I want to just request you, go down, go down and uh, more than what you've done. And then saying we're well, going to do this. And she hasn't done whatever. anything, she's not in the office yet. This is, I mean, the way she has been, she's telling us yes. is that that's what she's going to do. Yes. And I'm simply saying you should do much more than that in case you're going to be um, a, met, uh, a minister. Excellent. That is just a comment. It's a comment. So you'll not spend time on it. Next. <coughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Fernand, for that good comment. Yes. I'm Thank sure she's noted. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, nominee. Minimum wage in Kenya. Isn't that what Mary has been asking? No, my question is totally different. <laughs> yes. Minimum wage in Kenya is 15,120. It is arrived at uh, by agreement between the government and trade unions. It's we, tripartite. It, 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 uh, usually, it is the government the workers' unions and the employer and the employer FKE FKE so that the government possibly appears through FKE but it is arrived at settled and it governs what the other workers would actually get incrementally incre incrementally yes I get the word now my question is this how do you propose to work with some of the trade unions and their officials when we know for sure that they have abandoned workers to pursue parochial political interests. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I want to, the nominee, congratulations first. Uh, Mwashima Mary has told you about the old people and the PWDs. There is an issue of registration, late registration for old people, but the main issue is even the ones who are registered, they have to come and stay one or two days while accessing their money 
from either the bank or wherever they are supposed to be collecting. And sometimes it has even happened that for three, four months, they do not get, and they are told maybe it's got lost in the system, it will come, and it never comes. So how are you going to handle it so that they do not have to uh, come on Boda Bodas, old people, you can see them, PWDs, and it's very difficult for them. So registration of PWDs and old people as well. Please, it should be hurried up. Mishi. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, also just to add on what Dauda and Mas have just said, Honorable Board, you also need to ensure that you put measure to curb corruption on the issue of cash transfer programs. My question is on the people with disability. Noting that persons living with disability have been overlooked in terms of education, the labor force, and general social life. What affirmative action plans and even measures in terms of mainstreaming do you have for them? We have seen most of people with disability are just in the informal sector in terms of job opportunities. And few of them are in the white collar jobs. These are the people where we need to put some measures in terms of employing some principle of equity to ensure that they are also cutted in terms of this. Thank you. Florence, can you answer those? You can assign a minute to each. They are very clear questions. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, question by Honorable Maria Masse. She asked three. She asked three, yes. One of them was on the fund at NSSF that currently it has about um, 280 billion. That is the accumulated value that they have currently. Um, and uh, I think she was asking how safe that fund is. Kindly come up again. Microphone. I say that they have, uh, they have a product called Haba Haba, yes. where you contribute 25 shillings per day and if you do that continuously for 25, uh, for five years, you can actually be given half of that money to refinance your business. How do you intend to improve on that product? Uh, thank you. Uh, I don't have information on that, Haba Haba. I'll re I will ask for that information once approved and be able to look at uh, what intentions they have. Uh, and if they are saving for that long, for 25 years, the 25 shillings per day for five years to be able to start businesses, I don't know how viable it is to take that long to be able to start a business. I thought the business is started as they contribute to be able to help them uh, grow. You've asked a question on Inua Jami, the challenges that are there. I want to agree, and I think I'll tie this question to the question that has been asked by Honorable Dawood and Honorable Mishi. I agree there is a problem with the cash transfer to the elderly. And when I asked about it, the question, the answer that I was given is that the fund is not enough, so it cannot cut across all the over 70 years old. Not all of them are getting. So I'll be lobbying for more funding to ensure that uh, these beneficiaries are able to get the stipend and ensure that they get on time and also ensure that we clean up the database of these beneficiaries. We could be having ghost beneficiaries, we could be having the wrong people, the money going to the wrong hands, and I'm told some of the payments that are paid are usually paid through the bank to ensure that if there are debts in that population, the money is refunded back to the ministry and may be given to other beneficiaries. On that, I want to agree with you. I've been in parliament. Every time you'd go to a function, the elderly will come and tell you so and so is getting, and me, I'm not getting. There should be equity, and we ensure that everyone gets that is over uh, 70 years. I know the current budget that is needed extra, I'm told, is about 10 billion to be able to cover everyone. Then that also ties to the National Social Security Fund that in future we want to increase the contributions to NSSF 
to have a better retirement uh, benefits so that we don't have the stipends. We reduce on the stipends that the government has to pay to the overage. So for us, where we are, we start contributions, the mandatory ones, to NSSF to ensure that we have uh, better savings and we don't continue with a social security fund. So social protection uh, stipends that we give out. There was a question by Honorable Mas, uh, Emase on uh, duplication by counties. I'm also not aware about that, where counties are also doing the same for the elderly. I know even as a woman rep, I was able to do that. I was targeting those vulnerable uh, category to be able to support them. What is she saying, yes. which makes a lot of sense is, yes. whether you are a woman rep, the money is not yours, it's from the government. Whether it's NSSF, whether it is uh, central government, whether it is uh, CDF, whatever, it's all public money. How can you harmonize so that we don't engage in duplex payments? That's what you're Thank you. Married. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I get you. I get you. That is what I meant. Yes. I think we need to have a proper system and proper data so that we don't target the same. Flores, yes. that is not enough. You are the minister. Yes. If we confirm you, yes. what are you going to do to stop duplex payments and therefore wastage? That's what Mary we wants can to match know from them you. and have yes. one line so that we also use only one fund and we don't duplicate the, the rules. Mm. And I request well. that you confirm me, Mr. Chair. <laughs> yeah. So you know what this, um, you remember I told you they are looking at your suitability to hold this office. So you'll embrace them better if you appear to have solutions to the issues that they are raising. If five different agencies of government drawing money from the same source are paying, some paying even the same people, what policies will you put in place to stop this wastage so that this money can go to do something else for the betterment of our society? Isn't that so, Jeanette? Yes, sir. You have put it in a proper manner, your chairman. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chair, I also want to promise that we'll work together with the committees that are involved. The Committee of Labor will work with you to be able to streamline. It is not a one person's job. We will to do it together so that we serve Kenyans well. Uh, Ferdinand, I think, just gave you direction on what he wants you to do. Let me, t let me appreciate. Yeah. I think he was also adding on a point on what we should do. And uh, I want to appreciate what you have said. We will do more. We will still discuss and see how we can streamline the issue of the Gulf region. I have a, a cousin suffering. We don't even know where she's eight months down the line. You already said that, Ferdinand. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the next question. Andrew Murungara asked about the minimum wage bill of 15,120 that uh, we need to sit down and agree on the increment. Am I right? That is what you wanted me to address. Okay. Uh, we'll sit down and agree with them. And I also want to admit that we have a wage council that has already been approved, but it is not operational, I will ensure that it, it, it works to be able to address the issue of wages across the country and across uh, the workers. He also asked you about trade unionists using workers' money to play parochial politics. Isn't that what you asked? Yes. Yes, Chair. I also wanted to add regarding the same. What is she going to do to protect our workers from that cartel from Kotu? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you, Chair. I've had the 
the request by Honorable Murungara and Honorable uh, Mukami. It's addressing the issue of uh, these unions misusing the money for the workers, the contributions that they make. And uh, workers need to be protected. And I want to promise that I will stop that, ensure that that money that, that the workers contribute goes to their welfare, goes to helping them, but not for a few individuals to enrich themselves. Thank you. Daoud, did you ask a question? Yes. Yes, Dauda and Mishi. Uh, the PWDs. PWDs, uh, registration and that. Yeah, we will also streamline the issue of PWDs to ensure that they also get their stipends. No, it's not just the stipends. Yes. There is a problem in registering new PWDs yes. so that they can get cards, so that they can get services from the government. Um, there is that issue. I met the chair of the PWD's council, and he sorry, he assured me that there is a new card that has been developed to be able to help the PWDs. So they will do away with the current cards. They have now better cards to serve them well, and also address their issues in employment and be able to have the tax-free um, benefits. Um, Speaker, I'm not satisfied. Honorable Mishi has talked about the corruption. I'm coming to your question, Honorable Mishi. You asked about curbing corruption in social security, in social protection, in the stipends that are given out. And I've said I will clean the system and ensure we have a clean system, we have the right beneficiaries, and they go to the right people. And I think we'll be working with the Ministry of Interior so that we are able to get the information from the ground to the chief so that we get the correct beneficiaries. We'll work with the government institutions to ensure that we have the right people. In fact, Florence, you'll find that there are people, even probably in your own village, who retired five, six, seven years ago. Yes. And they're still carrying around papers now. They have even been discolored. You don't know what color they were. Looking for their pension. They come to Nairobi. They come to the MP's office. They go to everywhere. They can meet somebody they know. They go to NSSF. They can't even enter the building. And they made their contributions. This is one of the things that you must address. Probably even decentralized payment of those benefits to the counties. Correct. So that people access their pensions from the nearest point possible. Chair, I want to agree with you. Yeah, because, Chair, sometimes yes. what happens? Yes. What, is, what that pensioner is looking for gets finished with the transport money that he comes to Nairobi exactly. with and goes back. By the time he spends the transport money from uh, Bungoma to Nairobi and goes back, the money he was looking for is less than that. Yes, yeah. exactly. He spends more. Mm. I agree with you, Chair. I agree with the honorable members. There's a problem there. NSSF takes the contributions, but when it comes to payment of the benefits, it becomes a nightmare. I even saw their automation system. Their automation, their automation system is only on registration of members. But when it comes to the payment of benefits to the members, the process stops. I will want to streamline that. Let our public, let the beneficiaries get the benefits, even on phone. What is hard in doing that? I'm ready to do, to do that. Thank you. Maisula? Uh, an intervention on the NSSF. Chair. OK. And it's about, there was a suggestion, maybe the nominee can that if we continue allowing NSSF to collect, they are the ones in charge of collection, they are the ones of saving, they are the ones of you know, releasing the money to the... Why don't you separate? Maybe NSSF can collect, another body can be able now to deal with paying the pensioners instead of the same people, because they are the same people who bring a lot of bureaucracy within that place. Naisula, you can combine that with the... Naisula and Caleb. That one was not mine. <laughs> yeah, that was an intervention. You have had your bites. Ah. Because, <laughs> Speaker, our questions are not answered. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You are my friend. Thank you. 
let me ask mine. This is just simple. One okay. is about child labor. Okay. Uh, honorable Chair, you come to the urban areas, you'll be very surprised. Or you go to the sand places or places, just almost everywhere. Children, minors, are the ones who are working and, and getting paid. And uh, to an effect, these children don't go to school. So what is, uh, what is the nominee going to do to address aspects of uh, child labor? And about the domestic workers, which are these countries which are notorious? Not, not every Arab country maybe is notorious. Uh, maybe you need to tell us which are these Arab, Arabic countries, which are the UAE countries which are notorious on matters to do with uh, uh, the domestic, uh, like, like in Dubai, we've never had those kind of issues. Uh, some, I, I'm just saying. So maybe from you, what have you learned and which are these countries that are, have this effect? Thank you. Aisula. Thank you, Chair. And uh, I just want to, to say that the nominee completed her full term in budget committee. Maybe Honorable Ishungo should ask for some lessons. Um, <laughs> now, this is just a comment and uh, maybe an advice on this issue of our ladies and girls in the Middle East. The bigger question is where are they going, you know? So they see the suffering, they see a, a, a lady has come back in a, you know, as a dead and they are still going. And so as a policy maker and with your colleagues, uh, if this committee approves you, you have to really think of the, uh, on the issue of unemployment. And I think we've asked that question to almost every nominee at a policy level, how you're going to look at the issue of unemployment in this country. Because it's not just enough to have these conversations and our ladies and girls continue to go every other day. On the same matter, in your ministry, and this is just a comment, you need to relook at the people at your ministry and their relationship with the agents. You know, it was ridiculous the other day to see an agent now making the ladies to be the villains instead of the victims. And they take uh, high commissions from them and now say, but they're the ones who go and go and stay with their boyfriends and things like that. So you have to look at also those who want to go directly and they are not allowed, the, to get even the paperwork is so difficult unless you go through an agent. And so this is a very serious issue that we have to, to look at. But um, to my question now, growing up, Kenya used to do so well in terms, especially on, on one front, where our labor force was so competitive, it was professional, and especially in one of the service industry, that was tourism. You know, we were known across the region, but you can, we can slowly see that um, uh, it's going down. Uh, I need to know uh, what steps you will take to ensure that our standards are raised, because you know, tourism is one of our greatest uh, foreign exchange, Anna. How do we take our competitiveness to where we were known in the region and even internationally? Those, uh, Florence? Okay, Chair, I was to... Add. Oh, I miss you, yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, Florence, you were in Parliament, and remember we passed the Employment Amendment Act of 15, 2022. And uh, one of the jobless uh, youth out here has sent me something. Clearance and the pre-employment offer certificates requirements were abolished as well as the requirement for payment of such certificates on the Amendment of Employment Act of 2007. This means help police clearance, CRB certificates should be issued free of charge and within seven days from the application request and only after an offer of employment has been guaranteed. Six months later, DCI and the several CRBs from Metropolitan Credit Info, TransUnion are still levying fees like the law never came in effect after 23rd of April. There are also long as uh, than seven days delays in insurance of such certificates. Um, this is always a problem of us passing laws that are never implemented. This is a law that is existing, acts, statutes that are never implemented. Now you are going there. You pass the law yourself, you are going there. These youths who are listening, uh, are you facing them in the eye and tell them you are going to do something different that from the time you take over, 
the, such complaints are not going to come to us. Just face the youth of the country and tell them that you are going to take over. And, and this issue of, um, allow me, Chair, because I was in the Committee of Labor last uh, Parliament, and we tackled this issue of uh, our girls dying in, in uh, Arabian Peninsula, Gulf countries. There are cartels, part of the ministries are doing business. Don't uh, beat, um, um, uh, I mean, don't just uh, uh, assume or cover up. Go and handle the cartels and you'll solve these issues. They are the top officials who are doing the business. Chair, Chair, just, I'll be very brief with your indulgence. One minute. I've just heard you say that again you will change the cards for people living with disability. There was a time it was done also for the elderly. We have to have efficiency once and for all. And you know even as you do it, the community members, by the time they don't get it, it's such a tedious process. And then every time we go to the constituency, we're being asked, but I did this and you're not efficient. How will you make sure that there is efficiency in the ministry on these uh, monies, the cash transfer, once and for all? Florence, you can answer those. Some are comments. You appreciate them? Yes. Or disagree with them? Others are questions. You answer them. Um, I think we started with Honorable Naisula. Yes. Her question was on uh, what is going on, the policy on migrant workers. Uh, that possibly, there's a, pos uh, a policy, there's a bill actually, on migrant workers management bill that has been drafted. It is currently at the AG's office that uh, needs to have some legal drafting before it comes to parliament. So let's work together with the committee in parliament to be able to have this bill, to be able to streamline all those issues that we are talking about, to be able to um, fill in the gaps that we have on the migrant workers. And I know we'll be able to sort out those issues that the members have, uh, have spoken to. The other question that came up, I hope I will not jump. If I jump, let me know, is the one by Honorable Gikaria, he's talked about um, child labor. I want to say we will strengthen um, supervision of children that, you know, in the counties, we make use of the children officers to ensure that we don't have child labor. And we'll work to, with you as area MPs, identify those areas where we have child labor being practiced. If it is in the sand harvesting areas, we ensure that our officers are go, there, uh, go there and ensure that these children uh, go to school. We'll also work with the Ministry of Interior and the county governments to ensure that that problem is eradicated. Um, question by Honorable Kalib Amisi on the Employment Act 2022. Thank you that you have passed that uh, act. Mine is to implement, to ensure that uh, the youths of our country are able to get um, the clearance free of charge so that they are not made to pay. I will ensure that that is implemented. Thank you for that information. I asked about our labor, labor force and its competitiveness. In the hospitality industry, you said. And Gikaria's child labor issue? I've addressed that I've one addressed on that. Uh, okay. of uh, 100 to Gikaria. Okay. Uh, not uh, not is Sorry? about uh, the notorious countries. Oh, yes. On the notorious countries, I think we have an issue with Let me help you, Florence. Yes. You know, you should approach it this way, if we confirm you. We have 300,000 Kenyans in Tanzania working and living, they have no challenges. We have close to half a million Kenyans in the UK working and living. And in this country today, our diaspora is giving us more foreign exchange than any other undertaking, including those girls in Saudi Arabia. This problem that we're having now 
should not be rushed through condemnation and roadside statements. You need, if we confirm you and you get into the office, your counterpart from Foreign Affairs told us if we confirm him, the next day he'll be on a flight to Saudi Arabia. Then we have you here carrying the same plate. Philippines has over 2 million domestic workers in the Arabian Peninsula. And they contribute immensely to their GDP. So instead of bastardizing the process, you need to have a collective team of yourself, foreign affairs, and any other agents of government that's involved, and engage bilaterally. Why are our girls dying in Saudi Arabia and not in UAE, or not Oman, or not in Kuwait? Those are the issues you need to address. Because if you just rush in, condemn, make declarations, you'll do the wrong thing. Because these girls leave this country because there are no jobs. They earn a living to sustain their parents. They are, most of them are single mothers, sustain their children. Now a problem has arisen. Do you solve it by condemning or you solve it by looking at the root cause to deal with it? That's my advice to you. If we confirm you, it should be your first item on agenda. Don't just jump on a plane to go. <laughs> Have serious consultations internally. These so-called agents who license them, how many are they? How do they recruit these girls? How many centers in Saudi Arabia? We have big towns, Damam, we have Riyadh, we have all those towns, Ejeda. Do you have labor attaches in those towns? Who can keep the records of these girls, know where they work, who they work for, and regularly check on their welfare? These are the things you'd look at because we are condemning more than providing solutions and it's not helpful. Yes, Jeanette. Chair, not to, just to add on what you said, Chair. Look at, Chair, uh, the last three years, what has sustained this economy so much is the remittances from the diaspora. And that is the reason why in the Azimio Manifesto and even the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto, there is diaspora uh, affairs. Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Diaspora Issues, because they have realized the importance the diaspora is playing in our economy. Look, the public service now, where everyone looks for a job when they finish university, can only employ one million people maximum. But only you've just quoted here, Saudi Arabia only employ, uh, alone employs 210,000 people. So if you include the other parts of the Arabian Peninsula, the way the speaker said, you may be talking about six, 700,000 people. If all those people were to come back to Kenya, do you think it will be catastrophic? Don't you think, I mean, it will be catastrophic? So we need to get a proper solution to this problem. As the speaker said, not only condemnation, we condemn the INEAS Act that's happening there, but on the other side, we have to get a, solu a permanent solution to that problem. And the solution is the way the speaker is advising. Uh, speaker, if uh, I may, speaker, I may add. Yes, uh, I, I think speaker, uh, I wanted yes. to raise on a point of order. Yes. I think 85 or 95. I think you have concluded this matter, Speaker. You have really summarized. And that's a vision for the nominee. We, she only prays that the House uh, confirms her. And of course, you know, Speaker, your House, which is Parliament, established the committee in charge of diaspora issues, which means Parliament has taken this issue very critically. Then now they can link with the Minister. Do you think, Speaker, you have summarized and we can... Move forward. Yeah. Yes, I wanted to add you, uh, speak on what you just said, and it's quite a very important point. That's why we are deliberating on. Uh, most of the time, because we dealt with these matters when I was in the Committee of Labor, our girls go there innocently uh, through the normal channels, whether it's government, but they find other lucrative, other lucrative uh, work that we cannot mention here. So you must uh, pursue it in depth. Don't just look at it from the face value. In Philippines, the reason why they succeeded, because they have unified the program where it is through the government only, not the agents. 
because most businesses start uh, through this unscrupulous business because it becomes more lucrative to look for other work but not the work that was sent there for. So the, the agent may be innocent. Thank you. Florence? Sure, let me just ask. Yes, Mukami. Regarding the social, we have so many elderly people in our villages and they are living in a pathetic condition. Do you have any plans to do maybe elderly homes for them and for our youth who are really drinking? Thank you, Chair. Let me appreciate. You've actually summed it up. And I know this is an emotive issue, the issue of the migrant workers in the Gulf region. Of course, I've heard the presentations from the various sectors, NEA, NETA, but at the back of my mind, I have a feeling people want to protect their jobs, they want to protect the status quo, but I want to promise this house, this committee, that I'm up to the task. I'll get to the bottom of this and ensure that this problem of migrant workers come to a stop. You've clearly said about Philippines. Philippines are doing very well because they have systems that are working and they protect their workers. And I promise to be able to review the bilateral labor agreements with these countries. And we cannot just blankly say we stop uh, the movement of these workers. We already have several that are there that we need to protect and ensure they are living well and having good working conditions. Thank you. There's a question that I've just been asked. Maybe it is a, a thought by Honorable Mukami on how we can help the elderly. The stipends that we have are even too little. I don't even think the 2,000 shillings that we give them per month is enough. And we are struggling with that stipend. So before we even go to the safe houses, maybe we look for organizations that we can bring on board to support the church organizations. I think the Catholic have a safe home for the elderly. We can encourage them, we partner with them, we work with them and see how we can improve that lot. And also have the county governments come in and see how we can support them. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. I think we have so come to, speaker, I want to ask Ms. Shimbogo. Honorable Speaker, I was just asking, are these countries from the Gulf not part of international labor organization? So that maybe we can take those grievances in the higher level, international level forums. Mishi, most of the issues are bilateral, actually. So we, we don't need to go to ILO. They're bilateral. And Saudi has an embassy here. Kenya has an embassy in Saudi. So it's quite easy, Florence and other government ministries and agencies to deal with this matter. Uh, bring uh, our engagement with Florence to an end. We have served uh, about eight minutes, but you'll consume three of them to tell us your final testament. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Honorable Members, for giving this opportunity to come before you. I want to appreciate the role that you have played. It, has, it is a process that I really appreciate. Coming last, I was able to see my colleagues and uh, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of what you have done. I want us to encourage ourselves that we serve our country, we serve our citizens, and I promise to do my very best. And I want to lastly thank His Excellency the President for giving me this opportunity as a nominee for the, as a cabinet secretary for labor and social protection. I look forward with working with you, with working with the National Assembly, the Senate, and other arms of government in addressing the issues of Kenyans. Thank you and good bless. Thank you, Florence. We now discharge you and release you to go to your other duties. Sergeant, you can uh, show the nominee, uh, the way to and Sergeant. Once you're done, Florence, you the things that you can sort out with the sec, with the clerk's office. Sergeant, our next engagement is with Masi Kiru Wanjau.